<laughs> so okay. we, we have like a good, good morning, everybody. We are live. Um, it's so funny. I think Laura and I take these like precious moments before and after class just to like catch up on like all the things that we have to catch up on. Okay. And there aren't any children here at the moment. So it's I know, so we can talk about so many things. So this morning, uh, in this pre call for um, you know, the, the time before the class started, uh, Laura and I were talking about just sort of like what tomorrow is going to look like in terms of um, the end of the classes. And it's funny because we do this often in our cooking classes too, but I think it's a little different in this sense. In our cooking classes, we often don't decide what we're going to make in our week ahead until like the Friday before, or sometimes even that Monday before classes start, because it's so dependent on what's available from the farm. I think in this case, it's more like what's in our pantries, Okay. But it's the same kind of mindset of like, you know, it's it's like you're you're cooking with what you have available, which I think is a really um, if I if I took nothing else away from the last couple of months, that was it. That was the thing was like trying to figure out what do I have and how will that determine what I cook as opposed to what do I feel like eating and let me go get all of the supplies yeah. I need for that. It's a total shift for modern cooks and eaters because we are so accustomed and in some ways spoiled by this food system that yeah. we, we've grown accustomed to where you can just sort of get whatever you want um, yeah. you know, speaking broadly and that that's not true for everyone but um you know we have just abundance more yeah. than any other time in human history and, and variety um but you know as we've said many times with these classes like there is sort of a, a creative element that comes from working within the parameters of what you have, mm -hmm. that's like what grows seasonally in your area or what's stocked in your fridge or pantry at the yeah. time. Um, and so that aspect is really enjoyable um, and, and something that I've sort of exercised over the last few months with you. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think, um, you know, I think it, I, I brought that up because we were having a conversation about what are we going to do tomorrow? And what we've decided to do, because it is our last um, live feed in this format. We're going to continue with virtual classes this summer and we'll do a Tuesday morning class that'll be geared towards younger kids and, and families um, and probably be adding in some more of the cooking classes for adults. But these like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday classes that we've been doing since March uh, 16th, I think, 17th, yeah. Yeah. Um, are coming to an end and it's, it's, um, I feel kind of sad about it almost. It's funny. Like I feel a little bit um, nostalgic about what that, those first weeks looked like. There was, there right. was like, um, there was something really hard, but also kind of special about yeah. all of us coming together and the community that was built through these classes is yeah. really special to us. That's just what I was going to say. Um, like a lot of learning and a lot of laughter. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so it, I'm, 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 joining you in that like i've enjoyed it it's been a chance for me to get to know your kitchen better and for you to come into mine um but at the same time i'm really looking forward to summer and what we yeah. have um to yeah offer. and just a shift in schedule and sort of like a shift in mindset that this is you know what our summer will look like and um having that set schedule so um getting our kitchen for tomorrow just to wrap it oh, up finish that thought. yes thank you so, um like party or get together where um each of us is going to bring a dish that perhaps like is just special to us or sort of represents our cooking at this time or what have you and though we can't physically share it with each other we'll talk about it maybe share the recipe um yeah. Yeah. sharing within our community in that way and i would love if if um those of us who have been watching even if you can't join us and we'll post something on facebook you know, pretty soon after this class that, um, and on our Instagram that asks um, folks to share what their favorite recipes have been, not necessarily from these classes, but just in general mm -hmm. over the last couple months. And th thought it would be a fun time to sort of like capture some of those stories of um, what you enjoyed cooking, what the challenges were, what was really fun, yeah. what was most delicious. And so we'll each bring something to eat and sort of share. Um, and then um, if you can't join us for the live feed, send it in the Facebook so that we can, um, so that we can post it and, and share out with the group and just kind of have this as a, as a bit of a memory to capture the last couple months. That'd be great. Yeah. All right. So today, shortbread. Yeah. And this shortbread recipe, um, and 
I know I'm sort of like diverging a little bit here, but um, two thoughts. One was this: this is the shortbread we made um, at in the winter, like right around Christmas time, and and gave out as gifts um, to our board members, to friends, to um, our our staff, and our friends at the uh, Stone Acres Farm. Um, and it was such a hit. Yes. And at the time, you, I think, came up with the idea, Jen, because there was so little that was like fresh and from the farm in late November, early December. But we did have rosemary still yeah. because there's yeah. like a really sort of hearty plant that's growing in the high tunnel. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, I love rosemary shortbread. There's, I love shortbread in general. And I've always loved like the, um, I'm, oh, gosh. So, you know, I don't think my mom is watching today or my Aunt Liz. However, you know those tins? They're blue tins. Mm. And when you open them up and they were cookies, they had little cups of like, um, like little paper cups. And there was different kinds. There was like the, the ones that were like the pretzel shaped and the yeah, circle. I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the brand either. Yeah. Somebody yeah. help us out here if you're watching. Um, yeah. But they, they were my favorite. And I, we were always, I don't know where you get them. I don't know if they still make them, but they still make them. I got them at the grocery store recently. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I love those tins of cookies. And so shortbread was always my favorite. I remember somewhere, sometime, you know, I had rosemary shortbread. And it was like a revelation to me that you could take, because what I love about shortbread is it's a little salty. Mm -hmm. And that is, I don't love super sweet things. So to me, it's like the perfect treat, which is like, it's kind of sweet, but really it's a little bit salty. And the rosemary edition even just took it way over the top. Yeah, it works really well. Um, yes. And do you, are, are you feel able to like define shortbread for somebody who might not know? Like what makes, what is shortbread? I could be totally wrong about this, but I think it's that, I mean, it's, um, well, first of all, it doesn't rise. So maybe that's part of the shortbread. I also think it's really quick to make, which we'll oh, see. Yeah. Like a, it's a really quick recipe right. and um, you don't have to do much to it. when. A lot of recipes I do see that call for like the spices, like um, like rosemary or or you know I'm, I'm actually going to use lavender in mine. Um, I'm making shortbread cookies today. Do you want to help me? You want to help? Um, a lot of time. What? What is shortbread? Okay. Well, we're on the same page. <laughs> what is shortbread? That's what we're talking about. Shortbread are like these like butter cookies, and I think the I other thing is that it's really quick. But a lot of these recipes will ask you to take the um, lavender or the rosemary and, and add it to your shortbread and then you refrigerate it for a while before you cook it so that you get the butter back up to temperature. Um, because we're doing this in the um, food processor, um, and what I love about this recipe is you just like press it into a pan and yeah. cook it. But a lot of times shortbread recipes are not that short because you do have to make the dough, put it in the refrigerator, get it hard enough to be able to, <laughs> you know, somebody else to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your new baby today. Um, put it in the um, look. We're both yellow today, Maxwell. Mom. Yeah, and then put it in the Mom. fridge to let the Mom. flavors Mom. melt. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's what I was thinking initially. It was the first Mom. that there's no like leavener in it. It's it's like a high amount of butter and flour and yeah. you know fairly simple ingredients, and it doesn't yeah. rise. So I was thinking that was the reason why it had that name, but. Yeah, who sees this might be able to let us know, or we can just yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. So, um, so what we're gonna do, get our oven up to three twenty five. Yeah. Great. So that's that's going over here, and um, and then as we posted, it's a fairly short list of ingredients. So for this recipe, two cups of flour. Oh, let me get those up there. Okay. Um, two cups of flour. So that ratio um, is. Sort of a, um, a, a good texture. Yeah, we go that way, so, it uh, comes that way. We're gonna use that today. Two cups of sugar. Two thirds of a cup of sugar. Uh huh. And a teaspoon of salt. And that's uh, those four ingredients are gonna come together first in the food processor, um, along with the rosemary <laughs> or whatever um, herb you're using. Yeah, so it's the sugar, salt, and flour that you do first, right? Uh, flour, sugar, rosemary, and salt. Yes, I'm sorry. And then you flour, sugar, salt, flour. Okay, and then yeah, and then add the butter. And it's one tablespoon of chopped. What is this? Rosemary. Okay, what so let me get this up what here. What is this? What is this? So, um, Ooh, wine opener. 
I'm going to use a stand mixer. The rest of them are for a food processor if you have it. What do you need? I could do anything. You can. Here, come. You're going to cut my butter for me. So the butter should. I love cutting the butter. I know. The butter should be pretty I cold. Eat some butter. This is doesn't have salt in it. So I'm using unsalted butter. If you only have salted butter, you absolutely can use it. You might just want to go back on um, the salt a little bit. So it's one teaspoon of salt. And so if you um, if you're using salted butter, maybe start with a half a teaspoon of salt and then taste the batter yeah. and see what you think. And if you want more, add a little bit more. Okay, so Maxwell, I need you up on this chair. I'm gonna give you the mezzaluna. And I need you to cut the butter into squares, okay? Yeah. I think cutting butter with kids is such a great thing because it's pretty easy for them to cut. So can you sit right up here on this chair here? And you get started on that, and we'll get started on the flour. Okay, so Maxwell, we're going to go like this. And you're going to start with this here. And I'm actually going to cut it into uh, – one of the things I like to do if I'm going to be cutting squares with kids is get it cut into logs in advance. Mm -hmm. just like this so that they're into these logs and then they can cut these into squares and that's the size that you're looking for anyway so that works out really well okay so Maxwell can you go ahead and chop that yeah. all right mm -hmm. while he's doing that I'm gonna actually cut up my um, I'm using lavender today so my lavender blossoms haven't um, it hasn't bloomed yet but the um, the leaves will work well you just want to, I'm going to go a little bit less than a, tea, a full tablespoon because lavender can sometimes make things taste soapy, I think. Like it tastes like a, it's, it's so floral. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit lighter on the lavender, but I'm going to get that ready to go. Okay. Yeah. And that's something, you know, if you're, um, you know, playing with this recipe at home and have different types of herbs that you want to try, you may have to do it sort of trial and error. And I always say, like, start with less, you know. Yeah. It, at, at the worst, it's just going to have like a sweeter, you know, blander flavor, but will still be really delicious. If you add too much, like you said, you might <laughs> bite into it and it might taste like potpourri, which nobody yeah. likes. So, um, you know, play so, find the right um, for you. I'm cutting the butter and, it, you know, in reality, one of the things you can also do is, is um, you know, cut the butter in advance and have it ready for you to go just, just because the biggest thing I think is that the butter stays nice and cold because even yeah. when I was like researching can you make this without a food processor? And of course people made shortbread without a food processor for forever, you know? Um, but the biggest thing they said what, that I read was that you would want to make sure that your um, butter stays cold. And so you might do it on a yeah, marble counter. I did mm -hmm. it. Oh, nice job. Can you, let's see, we need to do the next. You did a, Maxwell, you did a lovely job on that. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm gonna cut this one into the logs for you, and then can you do the same thing with this one? What? Can you cut this butter just the same as you did the last one? I could, if you'd rather me do it, but I'm gonna be. He's like, I'm on summer vacation. I remember I said could do anything, so. <laughs> you'd could do anything. You could do anything. Okay, so I'm getting my rosemary, my lavender. So you're using rosemary, Laura? I am, yes, I um, grabbed them from the farm yesterday because I don't have a whole lot of herbs in my garden. I only have basil right now. Okay, and you know, the lavender, I think I mentioned, I started to say that when the lavender is in bloom and you have that beautiful purple flower, that also works really well. And I prefer to use that in shortbread, which I've done before, um, only because it has, you know, because it's a flower, it also has a little bit of nectar. So the flowers are gonna always be just a little bit, like a little bit of sweetness. Uh, which I like, but I'm gonna get this rosemary uh, lavender really finely chopped just so it's ready to go. Okay, so, so you, are you are you at the point where you have everything in your sandwich? Uh, yeah, I so I mixed the flour, the sugar, the salt, um, and I did do a little less because I have salt and butter, and then now the rosemary. Um, right. And now I'm gonna cut the butter and. Um, so good. I don't consider myself an accomplished baker. It's still something I'm learning. Sort of the, the rule of baking, you the butter. The temperature is so important because it really dictates like. Yeah, and with this, the reason is because you want the you want the butter to hold up. If it's melted, you get a really. Thank you, Maxwell. You did beautiful. Look at how good a job you did. Well done, bud. You can eat this little these little pieces here. They're just not going to taste as good because they don't have salt. My kids love raw butter. Um, <laughs> And so the, if it's too, if the butter is soft, 
Um, it's kind of like a pie dough. You know, you want that flakiness. Um, and with the with the um, if the butter is too soft in a pie dough, you get kind of like a hard crust. It's like chewy and a little bit um, hard to get through. And it's the same thing with um, shortbread. If your butter is not cold enough, it doesn't have that really flaky sort of like fall apart texture. Yeah, the crisp is gone. So um, I'm gonna get my sugar. Well, guys, I made this recipe on Christmas Eve. I hosted Christmas Eve this year, and I am one of, well, one of four children, but three um, sisters. And in my family, as is true for so many families, too many families, the women do most of the cooking on holidays. I'm always a little intimidated because my sisters, I consider better cooks than I, do, than I am. Um, and I made this, and my older sister asked for the recipe, and I was like, wow, this is like such high praise. <laughs> It feels. Don't you love that? Oh, I do. I love it. When it is, um, it, it it seems like it would be harder to make, but I think the rosemary just makes it really elegant. Um, and I then agree. I, I really love it, and I'm 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 excited to use the um, lavender because it's also one of those things that's so short lived in in my garden, at least. Right. Um, what was I going to say? So we're going to pulse this. Um, oh, I could do that for you. Would you do that for me? That would be great. Let me get it on first. And then what I need you to do is press. Can you see the, the one that starts with the letter P? Yep, that says pulse, but it's not ready yet. Okay, so Maxwell's going to go ahead and press pulse. You press it and let go. Press it. And one more time. Okay. So when you pulse something, pulse it means you go. Yeah, and that's what it is. Okay, now we're gonna stop. Okay, so we pulsed our flour together um, with the sugar and the. the Did that say pulse mix? That's a start and stop. Um, and your rose, the you know the, the whatever herb you're using. And I'd be curious to see if people try it with like thyme yeah, or do you need me to um, that. thyme might be really nice. Um, I'd, I'd be curious to see what, what else you might use. And you also don't have to use it. You can make this completely without the herb right. incorporated. Or uh, Melissa Clark who wrote the recipe. Yeah. Uh, well. like, yeah, oh, lemon zest or orange zest would be really nice. Or even a lime okay. zest would be really yeah. nice. Um, that actually would be delicious. I might try that next time. And um, and when you um, what she said was most important is that the ratio of butter to um, flour was you know one stick of butter for every cup of flour. So basically, a cup of flour, a half a cup of butter, and as long as that ratio was was good, you could kind of play around with how sweet you wanted it, how salty you wanted it, Mom, and that would have a little more flexibility. Mom, I have brown sugar. I meant, I meant Kai have um, a chips away yet. Uh, you can have a chips away. That's okay. Okay. And so then we're going to. Um, so um, in this recipe, um, it's just the two thirds cup of sugar, but then she said you have the option to add one to two teaspoons of honey as well. Yeah. If you want it a little sweeter and to just incorporate that, you know, like perhaps depth the yeah. flavor that comes from honey. And I'm going to add, um, add one cup of butter chopped into squares and also the um one to two teaspoons of, of honey right yes okay and i think i will do the honey i've never added honey to my shortbread right i didn't last time but i'm going to since i have it and why not See what it's like. yeah. yeah and i was thinking um you know, I was thinking with the uh, uh, lavender, that lavender and honey is such a nice combination. So I actually think that would go really well. So I'm going to add my butter, my cold chopped butter, so beautifully chopped by Maxwell, mm -hmm. to my uh, blender here. I guess it's sort of a food processor, but... Right. You know. so I am using a stand mixer, and I found that you know it, it took longer than I thought to get it um, to incorporate. You know, in a okay. food processor, I think it's just like a quick pulse, and it happens. In the stand mixer, as you might have seen, I had to let it go um, for about a minute, and then you get the butter in there, or are you put the butter in here? Yeah, I had mixed already the flour, sugar, and salt, okay. just so that it was distributed, and then I'm kind of using my hands to like crumble it um, 
and I can feel that, you know, the, the texture feels right, that I can, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's firm and it, it's starting to get really crumbly. So I think it'll, it'll. Yeah. And you really, you're adding the, you're pulsing it to get to fine crumbs. And so if yeah. you're doing this without a mixer or without a food processor, then I think if you're, as long as you're doing it with a pastry knife, let's say, or even a regular knife, keeping the butter nice and cold. So even if you have to put it back in the fridge and start over and then getting it to the point where it's really lots and lots of little crumbs. So I'm going to pull it in now. And I think I, I'm, this is kind of a new device for me, but um, I find that the bottom doesn't get mixed as well. Okay, Max, well, you can definitely do it. So I'm going to go a little more because mine's still pretty powdery. Um, it doesn't, it's not at the crumb point yet. Okay. Um, so, no. Really good. So the combination of the like rich creamy butter with the rosemary and honey is really delicious. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, so mine's looking like crumbs. Can I see, can I see? Can yeah. I eat some? Yeah, you want to try a little bit of it? See what it tastes like? Um, I think mine probably needs a little bit more. So mine's still um, pretty, is yours kind of um, moist or is it pretty? So it, um, I added the honey, which added a little more moisture. And then I'm finding that if I'm moving my hands and kind of like working it a little bit, I'm getting that like crumb texture. Yeah, because mine's a little, mine's has, is broken into pieces, but it's not, um, and this could just be a, a, you know, that this isn't the best food processor for this purpose. It's not at that sort of like, you know, when you make a crumble topping and it's like, you can tell that the butter is everywhere and the color actually changes. Yeah. Mine hasn't happened. That hasn't happened with mine. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second. I'm actually going to, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take mine out and shake it up a little bit. Because sometimes, like I said, I think with this one, what I find, is it good? Did you try it? Oh, yeah. Now it's definitely coming together. What you don't want it to be is to be too smooth, where it turns into like a like a one big lump of dough. You're not necessarily looking for that. Because what you're going to end up doing is pressing. I can't have you do this because there's a sharp part in here. Is pressing it into, um, oh, yeah, here it's coming together. Mm. Wait, is it? The flavor's really good. I'm actually going to take an extra pinch of salt in mine. Okay. Which yeah. Is, said in the recipe, a teaspoon plus a pinch that you could sprinkle over the top as well. Um, yeah. You like that. Um, the flavor is so good. The flavor's so good. Oh, good, Maxwell. Maxwell says the flavor's really good, which is good. But we have to go a few more pulses Yummy. of mine. Yeah. Um, Maxwell's liking it. So it, it kind of what it ends up turning into is more like a wet sand mm -hmm. than like. Um, oh, that's funny, Jen. I um, so I make an apple crisp as like one of my go-to dishes, and it's based on my mom. I'm trying to teach my friend how to make it, and I don't follow exact measurements. I said like, oh, you just mix it until it starts to look like wet sand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And so because this, Mom, this I you, just, I don't Mom, have a great food you processor. Put lavender in your cookies? Why did I put lavender? Well, I thought it would be kind of good. Oh, yeah, here it's coming together really nice. Perfect. I'm going to do it what one more. That? So I'm Mom, finding I'm I just got this blender. This. And it's supposed I'm to be like a food processor, but it doesn't really that. work the same I'm way. I'm going to eat a piece of that. Okay, you can. Um, so I think now that I've done that. I can, I've taken the blade out, so I can't really put that back in. So what I'm doing is the same thing you're doing, Laura, which is kind of like just grabbing from the bottom and- Not Working it a little bit. Working it a little bit. Again, you don't want to overdo it, but I didn't want to, um, you know, the bottom pieces were getting more, but yeah. Now you're seeing it's like this dough that when you press it, it sticks together. Right. And that's what you're looking for, but you don't want it to be super smooth. You want it to still be pretty crumbly. And so the next thing you're going to do I we're gonna, we're, you're gonna help me with this part, Maxwell. Yes. I'm we're going right to right take here. our pan here. I'm doing it right And we're gonna here. pour our crumbles into the 
into an ungreased pan. There's so much butter in here that it really doesn't need to be greased. Right. And for this um, recipe, she says you want an eight or nine inch square. Yep. A nine inch round. Um, I really like the, the bar that you get in a square pan or a rectangular pan. Yeah. I don't have a square. I need to. I, I always forget that until I go to bake and then I call for that. So I'm yeah. doing like a little rectangle so that I can get the bars, but I don't want to make it too thick because I think they won't cook, you know, yeah. okay. the texture. So I'm doing like two smaller ones. So I've got the eight inch um, pan and we're just pressing it down. Maxwell, I'm just gonna, I'm just making it even. And then can you, I don't want to press it too much because we don't want it to be, you kind of, again, you want that like crumbly texture. Yeah. Not so we're just kind of like, can you go ahead and just like use your fingers and kind of pat down like this? Yeah. Nice. Good job. And you can see that the, the lavender is flaked throughout. Oh, this smells so good. It does. And it's not too bad to eat even right now. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, that extra pinch of salt definitely got it to the place we needed it to be. Mm -hmm. I put a little bit of extra salt. Sure, you want to take a little piece? All right, so now, and I can still see there's but flakes of butter, which means it's going to be nice and crumbly and crispy. Um, and then the next thing, oh, can you do me a favor? Can you go grab me a fork? This is the yeah, do you see that nice it chunk of butter? Like yeah. Can you get me a fork so that we can do the, the pricks? And we're going to go ahead and... We could taste it? No, we're going to go ahead and make little fork marks all over it. Can okay, I do it? Yes, you can. Not, yeah. too, not too deep. So watch me. We're going to go like... Doo, doo. Okay. okay, like that. Make the sound too. Martha, what do you think those little holes are for? What's the point of those? Yeah, why do you think we have to make these little holes? Hmm. Uh, you know, it's a good question. I mean, with with um, when we did it with the crackers, it's so, it's so that it didn't bubble up. Crumbles, right. It has to do with you know the texture and letting like the moisture and the air escape. Um, right, and you don't, and you really don't want it to be um, poofy. You know, like whereas you know, flour is going to have a little bit of like self rising. Mm -hmm. Factor, so you want it to stay yeah. nice and sort of like block like the shortbread aspect of it that it's yes, yeah. they're not fluffy really, they're like denser, exactly. And they're so good with a cup of tea, yeah. my very favorite way to have shortbread. Okay, so Maxwell, I think we've got all of our pricks there. And look, there's a whole there's a whole little bit that you can taste over there, plus some honey. Yeah, well, my, let me see that, Laura. Okay, so here's one. Okay, here's mine ready to go in. I would really like to, I'm going to ask to borrow, well, not borrow, because I won't be giving it back, to have some lavender from your garden, because I've actually Can never cooked this. Sauce? Yeah, it. absolutely. Oh, you know how we made salt the other day? Maybe I'll make some lavender salt. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. That would be good. Um, that would be good on fish. So oh, so Maxwell just figured out something really smart. He put in the the dough with a, the little bit of honey that fell on the on the cutting board, and it was delicious. So drizzling Ooh. your shortbread with honey later on might be yeah. the most popular. Yeah. Um, and so we're gonna um, we're going to cook this at forty, uh, like thirty five to forty minutes, right? right? Yeah. So it's a fairly low temperature as like baked goods mm -hmm. go, three twenty five. So it's gonna take a while. Um, and you know, check it at 35 minutes. Um, not just the timing, but like, um, so if at 35 minutes, it doesn't quite look golden yet, give it another five or so, um, and then let it cool before cutting it open. Yeah. Yeah. And so it said 35 to 40 for the nine inch pan and 45 to 50 for eight inch. And so we're looking for a golden color. But you just don't want it to be overcooked. So you want it to be just, just barely there. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine in. Yes. Oh, uh, yes, you can. And um, the last thing I would say is that once you take it out of the oven, um, you want to let it cool a little bit, but you want to cut it while it's still in the um, pan and while it's still a little bit warm. Because otherwise it'll start to crumble on you. So you slice it while it's in the pan, while it's still a little warm. Okay, good to know. Well, I'm looking forward to enjoying this later today. And we'll to bring our party tomorrow. Yes, so join us tomorrow for our party. Maybe we'll bring some shortbread um, 
to our party tomorrow and um we're getting close to the end here laura yeah, your summer is upon us so <laughs> it's coming in, whether we like it or not um, <laughs> All right. Well, thank All you. Right. Um, I, this is a recipe that, like, I'm glad you reminded me of because I should be making it routinely. It's I so know, and I, I I agreed because I'm always I have a really hard time deciding what to eat for breakfast, and um, not to say shortbread is like the best thing to eat for breakfast, but it's kind of exactly what I want to have something right. like really sweet, really salty. Yeah. So it's perfect. All right. Well, we will see you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Take care. Bye. We're done. Yeah, we're done. The cookies?